paragraph. paragraph. President, President. Siviano lead it by example. Mitigate the damages and feed them quite ample. Quit it with the challenges because it's a quiet game. So save it. Illustrate. Illustrate. Benefits. Benefits. Son of man, save you from a relapse. Differentiate, son. I never want to be last. I'm standing on the corner for my people trying to free that. Spirit. Feeling that. Feeling that. Heaven sent. Heaven sent. Vibe when I'm hearing something positive. Pass it to my cousins and my peers and my mom and them. Family and fair love the cheers when I'm rocking. Heavy with the deep space. Deep space. Resident. Resident. Band of bros. Let's get down to basics. Hand a God on it so there's no way you replace. Trying to see my crew, you be better off the basics. Sergio, I gotta answer the questions that's raised from a few. And some freedom that's less than you pay for them shoes. Don't suffer from that hate that's been raging in you or your crew. Go silly y'all for president. I'm not a dancer, but blessed with some grace that'll do. And some wordplay that's fresh for some stations to choose. No matter what you face, I'ma take it from you and your crew. Go silly y'all for president. Yo, I wipe the cabinet clean and bring these lessons to the free world. Sivin the crew, we here for you and I can see girls not in the Heads. Tell the boys just to listen up. Focus on them scrolls that been written up. Cause I'll be hitting up. Executives getting tough with critical issues. No more ignorance has been enough. My sour stomach can't digest it. I'm spitting up. Up chuck the boogie on the speed and politic it up. Hobnobbing with the mayor Chris Thomas. Trying to figure out a way to bring back the bombers. Come on. Music from the township that started it all. Rap City on the rise then it started to fall. The lobbyists took over when they changed up the program. New format, uncivilized and barbaric like old man. Like I'm quick to Sign a peace treaty with a slow hand to bring back the real rap to sell out. No game, Yo, I gotta answer the questions that's raised from a few. And some freedom that's less than you pay for them shoes. Don't suffer from the hate that's been raging in you or your crew. Go silly on for president. I'm not a dancer, but blessed with some grace that'll do. And some wordplay that's fresh for some stations to choose. No matter what you face, I'ma take it from you and your crew. Go silly on for president. Yo. That was Sivion for president. And who's Sivion? By my man Sivion, one of the dopest, favoritest rappers of mine from whenever all the way back in the day. But anyway, before <laughs> we before we keep going, uh, I'm sorry, I got a I got a little I got a little overhyped with that. Hey everybody, what's up? We just decided to start off. This week's podcast with a little song called Sivion with, for President. With our election edition. My name is Joaquin. <laughs> I'm Jay. And this is the Overflow Podcast at thisisoutcry.com. And I must say the website is up and ready for you to check, check, check it out. Yes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I thought I, thought I was... Just, just, I was getting my notes open because my phone is busted. Right, right, because so it's a crappy iPhone. <laughs> I'm using your phone and um, my backup, awesome backup, your backup phone. phone. So, yeah, that. But yeah, website is up, is live, as they say. Website is live, and we don't charge. <laughs> you, can just, you can just go watch it for free. Uh, but on the website, we got everything. So, um, the most important part of that website is the contact page, where you can find out what we're about. And um, contact us, contact us to invite us to your church event, youth group. I mean, whatever. Yeah, we'll we'll show up and we will rock the house. I will rap, terrible yeah. raps, but I'll do them. <laughs> I will, I will, don't, don't don't challenge me. I will do them old school style. But anyway, uh, hey, we are uh, happy to be here. I'm excited. Um, I you know I always get excited. I love doing this podcast. I love talking. Uh, number one, well, this podcast wouldn't exist without you. And I love you know hearing myself. <laughs> no, I don't. I sound weird. I hate. I don't listen to myself anymore. I, just, I sound so weird. You ever notice that? You always feel like I always feel like I got a deeper voice than I do. That's <laughs> so whenever no, I listen I to myself, I'm like, who's that high pitched person? It's you. <laughs> I don't. I don't suffer from that. I, I love. I love the way I sound. You love the way you sound. So this week's message is on narcissism, <laughs> the narcissist. I love my voice. Um, you know what we yeah, have yeah, in the past too. <laughs> today. I, you know what? Oh, so many things. Next on so many tales. things. But um, listen, how was your week? How's your week been? <laughs> how's your week been? It's, it's been an exciting week. It's been a crazy week. I. All right. So 
I am thankful. Check this out. This is going to sound weird to a lot of you um, phone zombies, but I am thankful that my phone has decided to call it quits on me this week in particular. Why is that, Jake? Because of the election. There was an election. <laughs> you know, and it, it's not because of the election, but because of the aftermath. All right, but we're going to get into that later. Yes. But um, beyond that. But and, needless to say, yeah. Facebook has not has has not been a Facebook, fun place to be in. Instagram, this week. Twitter. I haven't seen much. About I haven't seen much Instagram stuff. It's all been Facebook. Oh, I've seen. And I'm, you know, of course, Twitter. I've seen I Instagram. And I don't Twitter. Get, I don't get on Twitter. Oh my god, much at all. Yeah, ever. It's just so, it's bananas. But um, me. um, I'm glad. Yeah, things. things this week have been dope. I mean, they've been dope. I mean, it's been kind of crazy at work because it's now a known fact. I work for I work for the news here in Atlanta, so. Right, I work for the media, so it's been it's been exciting at work because of the whole election and everything, oh, nice. and the aftermath and everything. So it's been real good, and um, getting floors in the house, <laughs> like literally, you had no floors speak. in your house. No, how did you guys walk around? We didn't walk around. We roller skated. Mm, did you float? No, 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 dude, roller skated. You roller skated? Yes. You roller skated on dirt. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. I call shenanigans. You ain't hood, son. You don't know about that. You don't know about <laughs> metal skates on dirt. <laughs> yeah, you don't either. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> that's not hood. You never, you never had that's, that's super poor. That's, that's not hood. You never had like you never you don't remember like the I uh, yeah I the do iron yeah I remember like those. the wrought iron skates yeah, that you I would tie those. on your sneakers that would hurt when you got hit. Yeah, I remember those. <laughs> we used to have those when I was a kid, and we used to like. Dirt roads. I mean, anything yeah, as, long as, as, long as, they, as long as as long as we can roll. <laughs> yeah, you didn't roll. You didn't roll very far. Dirt roads. <laughs> you hit a wet spot. Not it's at not. all. On that, not even like you hit a rock and boom, you're in your face. <laughs> that explains a lot. <laughs> well, now we know. Okay, awesome. So, how about yeah, you? How was your? Uh, my week's been. Listen, my week has been pretty good. Um, uh, boss, if you're hearing this, sorry, the boss hasn't been there this week so uh we know when the boss is not there it's always a little more a little more chill relaxed yeah you just got to make sure as long as you don't screw up you're good you know and everything's chill so we had that uh today we had ribs for lunch which was awesome we went and got ribs nice that was this place called the mustard seed <laughs> dude we got to take you there their sauce how christian is that place there's um i think i think it is run by christians i don't know but all I know is that their mustard barbecue sauce is is the jam. Yeah. Or, or the sauce. It's I'm not, not jam. I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of mustard based. No, that's a lie. I'm not a fan of vinegar based. No, it's not vinegar. It's mustard. Barbe- barbecue sauce. So. It's mustard with like a, a bit of a, like a little bit of a spice to it. Yeah. Like a nice little, not a heavy kick, you know, like just like pepper. I mean, it's banana. So the, the mustard seed, if you're in Atlanta area, look it up. Uh, I have to check. Highly, that. highly yeah. recommend yeah, it. We gotta go it's, there. It's one of those places you gotta go. You gotta be there early because they, they run out. Of they run out the ribs. Nice. Like that's how good it is. Uh, but anyway, without now, I'm, now I'm thinking about food, and I don't want to. Uh, no. So what else? What else we got going on this week? Um, I saw Doctor Strange this weekend. It opened up last week. What Did, kind of Christian are you going to see that type of movie? <laughs> I couldn't even give a straight face <laughs> saying that. <laughs> see, I can't. <laughs> I can, but uh, it was uh, so Doctor Strange, Marvel's newest, uh, newest, and according to the critics, greatest uh, nah. Marvel movie. Um, I disagree I th- with that. I statement. think it was. I think it was good. Now we're not going to go into spoiler territories <clears throat> because it, it's only been out a week. Uh, not even. Well, it'll be a week. It'll be a week. Like um, I, I do. I give it about. A, I give it about a seven out of ten. I gave it a six. So we'll split the difference and say. Overflow Overflow Podcast gives it a six and a half, six point five. What we think is greater and holds more weight than Rotten Tomatoes. So we're pay attention right, to us. Because Rotten Tomatoes has like hundreds of reviewers. <laughs> we have two. We have two. <laughs> and we're geeks of the genre. So yeah. Listen to us. But yeah, it was it was good. Definitely, I think, definitely seen in 3D because of the different effects. Um it was funny. I will say this. I thought it was funny. It had some good funny moments. You see, yeah, like it had funny moments. 
it had touching moments. It had some good action. Right. Um, the, the action, action was, was good. cool. It was crazy cool. The effects were phenomenal. Um, but it had it had its drawbacks. It had its drawbacks. I, my biggest drawback is always is just Marvel villains are all whack. The only good villain was their first one, really. Not even their first one. More like their second or third villain, Loki. Loki's like their best. Has been like their he was best the first villain. one. Well, no, because no, he was because he was Thor's villain to begin with. But wasn't he the? the he he the, wasn't in Iron Man or Iron Man Two. No, he wasn't the villain in Avengers. He was, but I'm saying he's been their best villain in in two movies, right? right yeah, in Thor and Avengers. Think. Like he's so he's their he's their best villain so far. He's been their their which to be honest isn't saying a lot. Cause it's not like he was like maniacally evil or no. over the top. Well, like he, was, made him, he well, wasn't like a scary villain. What made him a great villain was the fact that he you could relate to him. And then he so, was a good guy. I mean, it was like it's so, like this whole weird thing. Yeah. So so, uh, but I think that's how he is in the comics anyway. So mm. he, he's you know sometimes he'll do good. Sometimes yeah, because he's a trickster, right? That's yeah, kind of his thing. That's that's Loki. So so uh, so the villain issue, like all Marvel movies, to me. But I'll tell it's you not this. A very good villain. I'll tell you this. Doctor Strange's main villain, like the big villain, the way they um they showed him, right, was a lot better than how Fantastic Four handled Galactus. <laughs> like this rolling ball of gas. Remember in, oh, in, 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 uh, in Fantastic Four 2? In Silver Surfer. Right. So at least at yeah. least that. But, but isn't yeah. Galact wasn't Galactus a planet? Or is Galactus the big... No, Galactus is the guy with the, the big, Kirby... Jack the Kirby guy with that. Yeah. Antenna helmet. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he can receive great FM stations. But what about... What about... Um, <laughs> from around the universe. <laughs> from around the galaxy. What about Ronan? Ronan the Accuser. You don't think he was a good enough bad guy? No, he was pretty, like, one-dimensional. He was a one-dimensional bad guy. You know? Oh, we got to destroy them because... They hurt my feelings, our people's feelings <laughs> back in the day. I mean, that's kind of, that was kind of his his shtick. Like, like I, a good villain. I think a good villain, you have to be able to, on some level, connect with the good with the with the villain, or at least understand his motives. You know, right. where you can be like, yeah. So like, Ronan was like, no, you know, we're not making peace. We're not doing this. But it's like, but why? Like, what's your? What are you? What are you butthurt about? What is He's it about? He's butthurt about the fact that the Kree were once a powerful people, and now you know. But you see, that doesn't that nobodies. doesn't do it for me. Like, <laughs> just like I want power. All villains want power. Like that's why they're villains. Power, money, sex. Right, but there's usually there's usually there's you know usually some kind of under current that yeah the, at, that, yeah because it draws at, that at that least pulls that the number two villain in Doctor Strange. Even though it was a little bit ridiculous, like his reasons for it. Right. Right? What he wanted the power, but his, like... But you no. see... No, 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 no. You call him either. the number two. I, I, he really, to me, was the main villain. Yeah, yeah. To me, too. But, like, according to the movie and the story, he's the number two villain. Right? Because he's just... He was, like, the tool. Like, the guy representing the guy. Representing right. the guy, right? But, like, his backstory, like, you could relate to that. Right? That... Right, that you could understand where he was coming from, but what was driving him was just it was it was weak. I, that's what, what I drove thought. him was weak. Yeah, like the yeah that's see that's what I thought. So, but you know, it was it was still an entertaining movie to go. So see. like you know you know yeah like I mean so, and I think and well, I yeah think, I give it a hard six. Yeah, I give it a hard six. Yeah, like even Deadpool, like which I thought was great. Even their villain was a bit weak. Yeah. You know? Because I, I, I was wondering what you were going to say, because I'm right. like... And even their villain that, was... That, even, that he, villain was not Even good. their villain was a bit weak, right? It was... I mean, their villain basically was just there for Deadpool to have revenge on. Like, that was the guy's role, role only role. Yeah. Yeah. You Deadpool, know? good movie, weak villain. So all Marvel all movies... All Marvel movies seem to have weak villains. <sighs> even the bad ones. Even the bad Marvel movies, like... The X Men movies have like weak villains. Well, especially the, the especially the, this the last, last one. one. Oh my goodness! 
and which is funny, right? Because I'm ap- Apocalypse. Apocalypse is the oldest, most powerful mutant. Right? Like in, in and the I comics, get defeated by four kids. In the comics, he is almost godlike in his power, in the power that he's amassed through centuries and centuries of being alive, right? Right. And it took not just the X Men, but like almost all the mutants, even bad mutants, right? Like Sabretooth and Magneto, even the bad guy mutants all gathered together with the X-Men to defeat Apocalypse. Right. Right. And his and his four horsemen, right? Which right. were whatever. Liberties, whatever. But like, really? It took like four kids. Yeah, four kids. <laughs> One that was trained, right? Mystique. So she wasn't really a kid. But then it was like, um, Jean Grey, she was just a kid. Not didn't understand her powers. Scott Summers. Just a kid. Finally got sunglasses so he wouldn't laser <laughs> everyone to death. <laughs> yeah, Beast, which, I mean, he's, like, acrobatic. <laughs> like, he doesn't really have, like, any cool, like, power. He's, yeah, it was hairy. It was ridiculous. Uh, at least I could have Jubilee, like, throw sparkly things in Apocalypse. That would have been, that would have been great. Like, that would be like, But, um, nah. yeah, Boo. so... So anyway, we digressed way too much. Yeah, um, we gave we gave that movie too much time. Doctor Strange that it deserved. I definitely go see it. I would I would um I say definitely go see it in the theaters. Definitely go see it in three D. I think it's worth it. Um, if you're gonna see it, see it in three D. Yes. If not, then wait for Redbox. Yeah, like that's that's yeah. that's me. <laughs> now, now the uh, the one movie that I'll probably go see this Sunday that I'm super hyped about, more hyped about than Doctor Strange, is Hacksaw Ridge. Are you gonna go see that this week? I'm gonna, I think I'm I think I'm gonna go see it Sunday. I haven't decided yet. Um, if you haven't seen the trailer, check it out. Hacksaw Ridge is based on a, a true story. It's based on a guy who was a conscientious objector uh, during World War II. What do, you mean, what do you mean by conscientious? Basically, he said he, he, he couldn't kill because Why? of his faith. He was a Christian, and he said he couldn't kill because of his faith. So uh, he was going to be a doctor. He wanted to be a doctor. So he goes in, and he basically tells him, look, I'm not going to carry a weapon. So why did he go in? Why, why did he become a soldier? He was a medic. So Because he wanted to save lives. He wanted to help. He wanted to fight. He wanted to fight for his country. But by he, being a medic. But he wasn't going to kill. And so you know he became a medic because a medic is the guy on the field who saves soldiers when they get hurt. He And medics usually carried like a sidearm. Right. And they had to know how to shoot. But he was like, no. He goes, I'll, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to carry a weapon. And this is a true story, true right? True story. They tried to drum him out until they finally said, okay, fine, but, you know, you're on your own. And, and even his own, uh, even the, the guys, the soldiers he was with, they didn't trust him. You know, because their thinking was, you know, you can't trust a guy who's going to go to war and not be willing to kill. Right. You know, so uh, he does. And in this uh, in this uh, battle, Okinawa, Hacksaw Ridge, where it's basically this tall cliff and they go over uh, soldiers get he sends up saving like 75 guys he, all through the night. He's he's grabbing and, these guys and he's and he's and he's lowering them on this ridge on like the side of a cliff. Yeah. And he saves something like seventy five guys. He and saves his whole. He did not lose a man of. From my understanding, from his this guy is where the "he ain't heavy, he's my brother" quote came from. Is it? Ah, uh, that I don't know. That I don't know. But I saw this little documentary on him on YouTube, and I was just like, it made me even more hyped. So he, and then not only was he saving U.S. soldiers, but he was saving Japanese soldiers. Get out of here! He was saving the enemy. Yeah, he was. That's why they didn't trust him. He was. Uh, no, that's not. That's not it. <laughs> he was saving. He was saving. Even he was even patching up the enemy soldiers. Um, and he and then and hearing him talk, he's like, you know. Okay, so hold it, hold it. I'm gonna interrupt you. Sorry, sorry, but he was an American soldier. He was a medic. He was, but he was an American soldier. Yes, right. In the War of Okinawa, he, right? The war in well, the battle, in, in battle, the battle of, right when they were trying to take over right. Okinawa. And he was on one side saving people on his side, but then he also saved people from the other side. Yes. Right? Because his faith drove him. Yes. Yes. 
And even he says in the, in the, I'll try to find it and send it to you and maybe we can even post it up. But, uh, it's really crazy. It was like a copy of a copy that they posted on YouTube. But even he's, he's like, you know, my, you know, I, how could I kill, you know, like uh, something along like, you know, uh, God created us. So how could I kill God's creations? And, and that kind of, you know, that kind of mind. And this is a Mel, this is a Mel Gibson movie, right? It's a Mel Gibson movie. Um, it look, it looks fantastic. Like I said, when I saw the little documentary. I was like, yeah, I said, I, the dude, no, and then the best part is this. The dude gets shot, right? Oh, that's not the best part. But, they're, <laughs> but they got him on the stretcher, and they're taking him to the back, and he sees a soldier that's worse off than him. He gets off the stretcher. He'd been shot. Mm -hmm. He tells him, take that guy. He needs, he needs that. And then he drags himself 300 yards to the medic station. Wow. Like that kind of thing, right? Wow. Um, he is one of, I think they say, three conscientious objectors to have ever received the Congressional Medal of Honor, which is like the highest award you can mm -hmm. get as a soldier. So, I mean, and like I said, uh, that to me, I mean, a dude that does not fight, that he he goes to war to be the guy to patch, to patch the guys that get hurt together. He doesn't carry a weapon. He goes the whole time he's there without a weapon. And he finally gets sent home because he gets shot and he gets... Wounded. That's crazy. Like I saw an interview of um of Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn is in that movie also. And he talks about how like when he got the script, how like the story just like just moved him. Right? He yes. just like knocked him, knocked him, knocked him off his feet because yes. he just couldn't believe it. So yeah, yeah. I'm I, I want to see that movie too. I didn't I just I didn't realize it was out already. I didn't realize it was out already. But um I don't know. Not this weekend. This weekend is real busy for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and, and let's go ahead and listen. Let's go listen to the song, the second song of the day. Right. And the, then we'll, the and then actual we'll, the actual feature. The actual feature song. The feature song. The song and that then, we started out with is it's just to open up our election election yeah, the edition. Song, artist called Sivion, uh, dude that I that I've known for years now. I got a chance to get to know him when I was in Texas, uh, and he had a song called Sivion for President. And I just thought, how appropriate to start the podcast for the election week um, episode. That's so funny. So now, why don't you intro this song? Because this I, song, I don't know this dude, you, but yet you do. Well, I mean, <laughs> right. I, don't, I don't. You know him. I don't know. Yeah, him. yeah. This song is High Top Fate. So this is by Kanata Small. Now, Kanata Small is one of three of of Ray Soul, right? Ray Soul was big hip hop, I mean Christian hip hop group for a few years now, and then um, they stopped doing music for a while. Like one of the members, Juan Juan Love, he moved out of Miami. He's like this big time writer now. He's actually gonna he's actually publishing a book. I forget what with like a big time, like a big a big publishing house. Oh, okay, like a real deal. He's publishing a book. Um, I'm, I'm excited for that too. And then um, Kanata is well, he was known as Knuff, married to Butter P, also part of Raymond Soul. And um, she put out like her own EP, um, couple like, a, years like back. a couple years back. So now he's putting out his own his own album, and this is his first single off the album. I think the album comes out. I think the Tomorrow? beginning of or next be week. No, I'm. I think it's the beginning of next of of next month. Okay, I could be wrong. It's I, coming out at some. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. <laughs> if I'm wrong, I'll, Sorry. we'll post it. And I apologize to him because I know he's gonna listen to this. <laughs> Sorry, Kay. But yeah, Kanata Kanata is a cool dude. They're all really cool. Um, like I heard of them because you introduced them to me. Right. With um, was it their uh, first album? I'm Wasn't trying to remember. I'm trying to remember the name. Sandals of it. without soles. Something. Souls. Something souls. <laughs> souls for Jesus. I don't remember. What it I don't was. remember either. Right, but you introduced them to me, and I became like an instant fan because it was like almost like pure hip hop. Right? Yeah, it was that boom bap that I love so much. And then a couple years ago, um, Chino, Chino Life. Well, we got We got to get him here one day. Like he gives me a call and say, hey. Um, on my way to Atlanta, um, it's cool if I crash in your crib. I'm like, yeah, of course, you know, always. Oh, by the way, <laughs> it's right. like a, I'm bringing you Raymond Soul with me. So I'm like, okay, hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me talk to the wife. <laughs> it's like, right. okay, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll set things up for you. 
And um, yeah, we like hung out all afternoon. Of course, I grilled some food, some food, and and it was like because they had to perform, and they performed like with <laughs> they, they they had to perform later on that night, and they all performed with the itis. But um, anyway, I heard this high top fade. K Nuffs, or I guess he's going by his he's going by his real name, Kanata's newest single. It is dope. It's a real, it's a real dope throwback, right? It's a throwback, a throwback to to hip hop, a throwback to lyricism, which is rarely found in 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 hip hop, but on both sides. Right. On both sides mm-hmm. nowadays. So throw it on and that's um that's all crack our, crack our necks. Never would if I couldn't. If I quit every time somebody said that I wouldn't. Walking defeated, no homie, that ain't in the ammo. You could check the demo, only a couple on my level. <laughs> Been a problem since 97, yeah. And I'll be a problem till I'm in heaven, yeah. He called me to be great, I ain't forsaken. The name you bestowed upon me, homie, yeah, I'ma take it, yeah. So I'm a prince to saw the earth, serving the thirsty with the water and called dessert, yeah. Over your head like a halo, ayo. I don't need a spot like cool being Kato. Y'all know what it is. Tell me who the click is. I be us, us, us. Hyping up the party. Your money is probably us, 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 us. Yeah. Kid and play with the hot top fan. Yeah. Kid and play with the hot top fan. Kid and play with the hot top fan. Kid and play with the hot top fan. Ain't into the trap music, that music is just about as played out as crack uses. But that makes sense though, like that old Pento. It's always gonna be in the hood, like the name Lorenzo. Yeah, I know I could, but I won't go there. That's real talk, but you want veneers. I got lines that'll end careers. Cocaine flows, like you was never here. Road game flow, I'm trying to be debonair. So instead of throwing your CD out the car, I left it on the leather chair. But yo, when I hop up on these instruments, I'm trying to be like no one something you could get into y'all know what it is tell me who the click is i be us 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 hyping up the party your money is probably us 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 yeah kid and play with the hot top fair yeah. kid and play with the hot top fair kid, kid, kid and play with the hot top fair kid and play with the hot top fair yeah you can see the beauty in my mess, dude, cause I'm like a flower that's blooming inside a cesspool. So now I don't gotta lie to impress you or give you false hopes like presidents do. The GPS broke, but I still address you. South Florida, that's where these bills is addressed to. Uh, it's like I relocated residence to, and even with my new address, you wouldn't know my next move. God first, I don't care how the rest do. I put the Lord on the pedestal, cause he's better and better than anyone I ever knew. And if you know him, then bring it in like my revenue and let's ah, breathe it out like Martin and Gina, Tommy and Cole, Pam and the other believers, we do it. Y'all know what it is, tell me who the click is, I be us, 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 hyping up the party, your money is probably us, 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 yeah, kid and play with the hot top fan, yeah. kid and play with the hot top fan, kid, kid, kid and play with the hot top fan, kid and play with the hot top fan, Woo. Yeah, Kanata Small, new single, High Top Fade. Go to SoundCloud, search for Kanata Small, K-O-N-A-T-A, just in case. Small, S-M-A-L-L. <laughs> and um, give it a listen. Give it a listen. And he is easily, lyric. you know, he is easily one of my top five. Okay. He's one of Jay's top five. So there you go. That's uh, high praise indeed. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I yeah. No, hold on, hold on. Funny story, funny story, funny story with that song. When he put it out, right? No, I think, I think Marty, I think Marty put like the the image. It's like, hey, check this out. You gotta listen to the song, download whatever. And then one of the social fans was like, oh no, you you're my favorite rapper. And then Marty said, yeah, well, you know, well, he's my favorite rapper. 
And then all of a sudden, oh, well, I'm going to listen. I'm going to go download now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people. Oh, how people are so easily swayed. So speaking of people being easily swayed. <laughs> and there's the segue. Um, so as, uh, as our listeners know, as all the, the whole world knows. Million of you know. Um, uh, we just had our elections this week. Uh, here in the United States of America, uh, it was Trump versus Hillary Clinton, and we've talked about Trump before. Um, you know, just kind of some things how we noticed some things and how they could apply, and how we how maybe we react in our faith with how, how he's just so bold and how yeah, he says right. and right bold how like we Trump, be bold bold like Trump. The deal is that we have never ever right um, marked a position on where we stand right. Or what we favor with this whole election. That was that was on purpose. That's on purpose because, um, at the end of the day, you know, I, the way we we the way we view things, wh- whichever party, whichever person that you support or supported, uh, there are certain things that just don't change. Um, what do you mean? Well, you know, the government still has to to do what the government does, whether they grid they're gridlock or they do something. But the government's always going to function how the government functions, which is, in a way, dysfunctional, even in the best of times. Correct. Um, uh, regardless of who you support, uh, your mortgages still do, <laughs> right? You still have to go to work. So you have to work in the morning. Um, and the media is going to overhype everything that everybody says. And so, you know, this week uh, after the election and, and on Tuesday night, once it was declared that Trump won, the next morning, uh, you know, we, I was funny because we wake up and, and I texted you and you texted me back and, and the, the comment you texted me back was like, uh, Facebook should be fun today. And <laughs> I didn't know it was so prophetic. <laughs> wow. So when we open up Facebook, I mean, it was just a deluge. It was just overwhelming with the reaction uh, to Trump winning, uh, whether it was yay Trump won or boo Trump won. Like, people just lost their minds. They lost their collective minds. Right? That's true. And the one <laughs> thing out of all of this, and, and me, like Jay, like Jay said earlier, he stopped looking at Facebook. I... Uh, I, for the most part, stopped at maybe every few hours, I'd open it up, uh, just to scroll more than anything, looking for like news stuff, like computer, like Android phone news or movie news, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, there are other websites for those, but things, right? well, but you know, everything's so <laughs> aggregated so nicely, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, and like, they, it knows what I like. So, you know, it's there. <laughs> Facebook stalks me. Um, but the one thing, the one thing that I that I noticed, and it seemed to be even more hyper uh, than uh, even before the election, before we all voted, um, and that is how people, and I'm going to be very specific here. That is how Christians cool. were were reacting um, if you did not uh, uh, vote how they thought you should have voted. Correct, you on, know, on on both sides, on, of the on both sides. Now you, so you had like the the Trump people that were kind of like, oh, how can you not vote for Hillary? You know, Trump is the <clears throat> the man that God's placed, you know, there to be our leader, even with his faults and blah 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 blah. And, also, and so on one end, it was like, ah, uh, he kind of almost like <laughs> making Trump like this idol that he is not. I, I yeah, I, I saw I saw somebody po- right this post that almost almost like practically gave Trump like sainthood like right. al- almost made him like the savior of our nation Correct. with their with their post and all the 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 beauty tools that they gave him on wow on how God lifted him up and placed him in this place. and I'm like oh god no right and like I, I like really like I, I just had to get off Facebook not just because of that but as you said, like Christians, we're going to speak specifically about Christians, right? Yes. But um, like throughout the whole campaign, the whole election campaign, whatever, right? You see, I mean, everybody was polarized, right? Yes. Believer and non-believer alike, we were all polarized. But what I'm Kodak. What what threw me 
What threw me off? Polaroid. Yeah, Polaroid, Polaroid. Eh, nah, eh, okay. I'm not even gonna get that. Eh, to you. It was okay. It was okay. <laughs> but what? 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 <laughs> I'm not even. It angered me. I'm not even gonna lie. It right. angered me was the fact that all these Christians, right? Because it's, 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 they were all crying and complaining. It's the end of the world. Oh, everything is over now. Oh, the end of the world is coming. With Obama, it was Obama was the Antichrist. Oh, wait, now is this before the election or right this after? This is after, right, right after, after the, the election. election. Okay. But I, oh, I can't believe Trump is president. That's it. The world is over. I'm gonna stop praying. I'm gonna just wait for the world Whoa, to be to, to to end and what, all this. I mean, it was what people do you? Know? It was it was horrible. And I'm just looking oh, at these. Awesome. I'm looking at these posts on Facebook, and I'm like, how dare you? How dare you put so much? hope right in a person that you lose all hope in christ all hope in in god and say that your life is over that everything is done with and it's all over because the person that you didn't want elected was elected yeah i didn't see that drama (laughs) oh my god lucky you um or maybe it was there i just i just didn't (laughs) see it right (laughs) i was blinded to it my 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 issue wasn't that because whatever the world is always ending for for us. It's always that sec- certain. If you're if you're the Christian that was like the world is ending because Trump got elected, you're also the Christian that the world's always ending when something is happening. Like you're 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 the, you're the you're Christian like, you're, you're the, the like Christian that, that believes that every new year you're on your knees afraid that the world is gonna end. Yeah, so, so. <laughs> I'm gonna dismiss you. Like whatever. Um. But what, what what bothered me the most, and I think the 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 heart of the thing wasn't it's it's not that, right? It's like the end of the world because that every year it's the end of the world. But it's the Christians that said, and I quote, or well, I don't quote, but I say say it, and they said things like this: "I am no longer going to be your friend if you voted for Trump, or if you." Vote for Hillary. Or how can you or call you yourself a Christian? Or how can you say you you're a Christian if you voted for Trump? I can't talk to you. I can't, you know, I'm I'm gonna have to unfriend you. Oh, you voted for Trump. I, I see the kind of person I see now the kind of person you are. Right? Not not that you had not that these people had a a, a civil discussion and parsed through the details and parsed through the through the chatter to see why it was that certain people voted certain ways it was because you voted for this person and this person won i can't be your friend i mean and i, I even showed you an example of that uh-huh. yeah where i don't know how i'm going to deal with this person when i see him next week this sunday because a part of me i'll be honest with you i'm being real honest right now with everybody a part of me if he says hi to me i'm going to be like yo you just said you couldn't talk to me on facebook because because of how I voted, I'll say it. I voted for Trump because of yeah. how I voted. T- tell him, but you can't. You can't you know? ask him like that. You, in, in the- no, 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 no. I'm telling you how what I, what how like I feel. What? How yeah, I how you- feel. <laughs> how I feel. I'm telling you how I feel. I would respond to him because you're you're saying to me that now in your eyes I am less than because of how I voted, regardless of what my regardless of what my reasons might have been. So you're, I'm less than. So if I'm less than, then I don't need to talk to you, and you definitely don't need to talk to me because we don't, we don't talk to people that are less than us. It's just ridiculous, right? Because so I'm, hold up, let me slide that soapbox back out. Ugh, get away from here. I'm, I'm like, I was almost stepping on it. <laughs> no soapbox, no soapbox. Because the, the the thing is this, right? This is what, right? We we, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be, listen, this is going to be the most controversial podcast we have. Pro- probably, 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 probably. For this year. Pro- for, for now. <laughs> right? Because it's, I mean, I've seen other people get attacked, other friends get attacked, right? I told you about this this pastor friend of mine, um, Frankie Vega, who is constantly being attacked. And the funny thing is that, they're being attacked by other believers, right? By other Christians, right? So <clears throat> my thing is, right? And, and you and I have discussed this, and I think maybe we're going to follow this this week up, next week with this question is, and, and, and maybe we'll invite somebody to come in and, and, and help us. But the deal is, when do you stop 
being an activist and start being a Christian, or when do you stop being a Christian and start and start being an activist? Right. Right. Because, I mean, I'm not saying that being an activist is wrong. Correct. Right. If you're fighting for something that's righteous that you believe in, like Martin Luther King Jr. Right? right. He was an activist and a pastor and a Christian. Right. And he was awesome. But the difference is that Martin Luther King Jr. never stopped being a Christian. Right. While he was out there, you right. know, being an activist. Right. So right. Everything you, that he right. did was reflected and, 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 and founded out of the Bible. Because the Bible says this, then he reacted and responded in a certain way. But you have a lot of these Christians and believers now that are very militant with their activism, right? And right. with angry and the hatred and all that. But then they also say that they're Christians. But your activism, everything that you do, everything that you say, everything that you act out in has to be acted, said, and done out of love because you don't rep yourself. Your race is not more important than your faith because no matter what, we all stand before God. Right. And we all stand before God because Christ came to give his life for us so that we might be saved and have our eternity with him forever. Right. Not because I'm Hispanic. Christ did not be come off his throne because I'm Puerto Rican and he wanted to save all Puerto Ricans and, and put Puerto Ricans out there. Right. right. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold yes. on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold yes, on. he did. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Wait. Go ahead. Because I got to. I got to. Take the soapbox away from you gotta me. Put, you got to put the soapbox. <laughs> yeah, listen. See, and, and and we're passionate about this, and we and we get the problem that we're having is 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 we is is we don't want to get into just being just judgmental, or whatever, um, attack attack mode. Uh, but you know there is truth to that. How is it? How is it that you listen? I know a guy, a friend of mine's dad posted something on Facebook. He goes to church, and that Sunday, this woman comes up and starts basically berating him as to why he posted that in church. Right. Okay? I, listen, th it's a good thing I wasn't there because <laughs> I would no longer be allowed to go to that church because I think I would have snapped because you do not do that. Your activism, you know, it's, it's funny how we want to show compassion for others. But then our very own brothers and sisters that we fellowship with, that we do church with, that we do life with, you know, we want to we want to push them aside. We want to uh, cast them aside. We want to castigate them. And then we turn around talking about, well, you know, we're all about the love of Jesus. Right. You know, but then you can't. And then, you know, look, and, and, it, and it comes it boils down to this. I think it boils down to this. Jesus said. Right. He said, love the Lord God. Love the Lord your God while your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Correct? Yeah. Then Jesus said, love your enemy as yourself. Now, unfortunately, right now, in this climate, we have a lot of people. We have believers that view the other, the other believer, who didn't vote like they did, as their enemy, which is wrong. But at least, at least follow that commandment. If, if you see them as your enemy, love them. You don't say, I'm going to unfriend you from Facebook. I'm going to stop talking to you. Well, you know, you do know, me the favor and unfriend me. You know, you know <laughs> but, what I'm saying? But yeah, but, but, you, it, don't, but, it's, but it's, you don't respond but to them. The thing, you don't respond to your brother, right? Love your right. neighbor as yourself. Love your brothers, right? You don't respond to your brother with hatred and anger and, anger. and spitefulness. Yes. And, 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 and just because... And hurtful words. And, and just, be, just because, because you, disagree. you disagree on something. Yeah. Listen. Right? And... and, 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 and and that's the thing, right? Because what we came here to talk about today for this podcast is that all those believers that either responded or reacted out of fear or anger and hate mongering, right? They forgot one thing, right? Well, we got a couple of they, things. Well, well, the main thing. Wow, the main the, thing. The, listen, the, I'm, I'm riled up, Jason. Listen, You're going to have to bring listen, wind me in. The main thing is that God, the God that we all serve, right? Re regardless of of our opinions or our thoughts on worldly and natural things, the God that we all say that we serve, that God is sovereign over all things. He is. <laughs> You're so dumb. He is sovereign over all things, right? The God that we serve is almighty. He's all powerful. <laughs> He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He is sovereign over all things. And, 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 and I get it. You know, you're passionate about your political views, 
Correct. But everybody is passionate about their political views right. and their religious views and their sports views and their everything. Right. But that does not stop God from being God. And it doesn't and it shouldn't stop us from being believers and it should not stop us from acting out acting the way Christ would and loving our neighbors we love ourselves. Yes. Because in not doing that, then we, right? Because what does the Bible say? How can you say you love your brother whom you have seen? Right. Right. How can you say, what is it? How can you say that you love me who you have not seen and yet you don't love your brother who you have seen? Right. Right. That it's not right. a good thing in the how eyes you, of Christ. How can you say you want others to know about your God when, you know, uh, the Bible even tells us, right, you know, how we how we treat each other shows the world. Right. They will know you by your by, right. by, by your love. They, they will know you by <laughs> your love. They will, they will know. That you, no, not even. They will know that you're my disciples. Yes. By your love, right? We forget that God is sovereign. And the God, no matter what, you know, he runs and rules everything, right? The good and the bad. The Bible says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust, right? right. So it's just all the same. No matter what happens, Trump is president, right? President-elect, but Trump is president. And whatever's going to happen, only God knows. But regardless of what happens, God is still God. And if we call ourselves Christians, then we represent God here on earth. And we have to maintain our belief that God is still God and God is sovereign and he is in control Correct. of everything. And if you want, you know, listen, if you want to be involved in whatever uh, the process, uh, you know, you want to be the person, oh, I'm, I'm against him because I don't agree with these things or whatever. Well, however it is that you want to be involved, that's fine. But remember that at the end of the day, ultimately, God, like Jay said, God is God. And the reality is that all this stuff of the world fades away anyway. And how how we treat each other. You know, when you when we you know, I believe when we stand before heaven or when we stand before God in heaven, you know, right. He's not going to be like, hey, well, did you vote Democrat or Republican? Right. Or independent. Why didn't you vote Trump in 2016? Why didn't you vote? You should have voted Gary Johnson instead of Trump or Hillary. Right. (laughs) Or the other female. uh, Jill, Dr. Jill Jill Stein. Stein. Right. He's not going to ask us that. But I think that one of the things that will will pop up in front of us will be, wow, you were. Why were you so? spiteful and hateful <coughs> towards your brother. Right. Did you love? Did you love them? You know, did why, you show did you show my love to you them? You know, why did you, you why it's easy you show the love to the to the pagan, but you couldn't show love to y- your own family member. You right. know, we 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 forget we forget one thing, right? In Daniel 2, chapter 2 verses 21 and 22, it says it is God, he meaning God who changes the times and the epochs. He removes kings and establishes kings. He gives wisdom to wise men and knowledge to men of understanding. Right? It is he who reveals the profound and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. Now, I, 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 I brought those verses out, right? Because a lot of, you know, the way I see the response of these Christians is that, they forgot in whom their hope lies, right? Yeah, they forgot so, yeah. that their hope is their hope is based in eternity. Their hope is based in God, right? And if God is sovereign, Daniel tells us that he places kings and he takes away kings, right? There is nothing that happens. And, and that's the thing because we can get into all these talks of predestination and, well, does God put evil rulers and whatever, you know, but nothing happens that is outside God's power, God's will, or God's control, right? Whether right. you agree with it or not, whether it hurts you or not, God is still sovereign. When I was homeless, it sucked. I looked at God. I'm like, dude, what are you doing to me? Help me, right? But I had, after a while, I'm not going to say I was this instant super spiritual Christian, right. right? It took me a couple of months to be like, you know right? You know what, God? You're in control. You're going to take care of me. I have to trust and believe in all this faith that I say that I have in you that you're going to handle this and you're going to take care of me. Right. Right. And it sucked, but it could have been worse. It could have been a lot right. worse. And, it's, and it's, the thing is, is you know, no, no one's saying, you know, don't be passionate about the things you want to be passionate about. 
No one's even saying that you can't you know, be angry. And yeah, it doesn't mean you can't be angry. However, you know, the problem with anger is is that anger very easily leads to sin. And when you start uh, telling people that you can no longer uh, uh, have anything to do with them over something as uh, really, I mean, as far as, I mean, listen, and I love politics. I love, I love arguing. I love pushing buttons. But at the end of the day, it's a game to me. You know, it's not reality. It's not my life. You know, my life is one built on trying to serve Christ and what that means. And the politics is fun. It's a hobby, right? It's okay to be passionate about things. But when those things overtake the sense, your sense of righteousness towards your brothers and sisters, right? Now we have a problem. And, and we forget that God is in control. I mean, Romans talks about it, um, right? You know, honor, honor the ruler, those placed above you. Is it right. Romans? Right? Yeah, Romans. Romans. Um, because God is sovereign. It's not my fault. <laughs> oh, God, God is sovereign. God uh-huh. is sovereign. God is always in control. And if anything, if you believe, and, and that's the thing, if you believe that God is in control, then you can get, you can get through disagreements because that's, that's where you have your common ground. Listen, me and Jay have gotten into some really just scream, not scream, but like really loud, louder than we normally are kind of. Louder than normal Puerto Ricans. Arguments. <laughs> Where even his wife has been like, uh, you guys going to be okay? <laughs> Stop it. You guys are friends. You know, we know. We know. <laughs> you know? Um, but at the end of the day, you know, that, that doesn't define, our disagreement doesn't define our friendship. Our disagreement doesn't define who we are as brothers in Christ. You it know? doesn't define who we serve. And it doesn't define right. who we serve. Um, Psalm 42, 5, David Ask God, right? David asked God. David was, you know, the whole aftermath of of what he did, right? And the fact that his son died. So, um, well, not even, not even. This is when he was being hunted by people that he called brothers, right? right? <laughs> this, this, is what, the, this was before that. This is when he was when he became king, and the people that he broke bread with, and he called friends that were hunting him for, you know, hunting him down to kill him. So he was, um, you know. Suffice it to say, he was depressed. He was yes. kind of angry. So it says, he says, why are you downcast, O my soul? And why are you disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Right? So David, even in that time of turmoil, where, I mean, he could have, like, I mean, come on. David is the giant killer, the original giant killer. He could have easily, like, sliced and diced and murdered all these people. Right, right, but instead, I mean, it hurt him. It messed him up, in, you know, in his interior. It messed him up. But instead of losing hope and getting angry and coming out his face, you know, as we say back home, he he turned to the Lord and he realized that his hope is not in his feelings. His hope is not in what happened or what's going on. His hope is not in the circumstances or the things around him. But his hope is found in God. And no matter what, he will still praise him. He will still worship him. He will still lift up his name. And that is how, that is the response that we as believers should have right now with however you're feeling about the results of this election. Our hope should always remain in God. We cannot act and respond in the way that those that have no hope do because we have a hope in God that is everlasting, a hope in God that will last for eternity. Those that are lost without hope, they react that way because their hope is not found in God. Right. Right? So there is no way that we can say that we're Christians and we're believers and we act and we respond the same way that the non-believers and and the, well, the non-Christians do. Correct. I mean, and, and, and once again, we're not saying that it's not about that you can't have a response and you can't have, a, you can't feel a certain way or, um, have certain uh, you know reactions or whatever, but it's but it's in how we react. You know, do we react in 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 knowing that our hope, you know, uh, is in God, or that, or do we just react because we just react? Um, like right now, who is your hope placed in? 
right? right. If, if you're responding with such bitterness and anger and saying things like, oh, well, we're not friends anymore, or how dare you call yourself a Christian, or oh, well, the world is going to end and I'm just going to stop living and praying, whatever, then it seems like your hope mm-hmm. was in the government or your hope was in whatever political yeah, was party it, you were Trump you were Trump Hillary or Hillary or, or whoever. Yeah. the other guys I can uh, never or, remember their days or Gary Johnson right? or, or, Jill or, Stein. Or, or or even Bernie Sanders <laughs> or even right? yes or even Bernie <laughs> or even Sanders, Bernie Sanders. Old Bernie Sanders right yeah i mean yeah if 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 uh, if you're reacting listen once again and we, and we got to keep we, we keep, reiterating keep reiterating because we want you to understand it's not that you can't feel upset or angry that your person or won sad. Or that your person didn't win, or how people react to the fact that your person won. It's not. It's not about that. It's about how we take that information in, and how we how are we pull it, pushing it out? How are we reacting? You know, to that. You know, um, how how are we re, how are we reacting to the fact that something didn't go our way? And and how how are we talking to those that won? Because you know, it's it, but it goes it cuts both ways, right? Because just because your guy won doesn't mean that, that gives you the right to, to be pompous and to be haughty and then to tell people, hi, you see, you know, how can you, how can you be a, how can you, cause I've, I've read this. I have seen this, you know, I, how as a Christian, could you vote, not vote for, for Trump? How as a Christian, could you vote for Hillary? And so that's still yeah, the I've, same I've, thing. I've seen that also. That's still the same thing. Yeah. That's, yeah, still, that's still an attitude, um, n- not one of love, or not one of realizing that God is, right. is, is, is the sovereign one, not one of hope. We're not saying that you can't be angry. Yes, you can be angry. That's why we have anger. We're not saying that you can't be sad or disappointed, right? You can be all these things, but you can't react like you don't serve a God that is loving, that is forgiving, that is peace, and that is sovereign and in control over all things. Right. You can't respond or react like those that have no hope when our hope is in Jesus, right? And yes. wow, I'm going to say this. I'm going to end it with this. Well, walk into the ending with this, right? Our hope is in Jesus Christ and his promises. Our hope is to one day be with him again as he told us that we will. The things of this world, the good, the bad, the problems, and their solutions are all momentary. They're all fleeting, right? Our hope in him, in Jesus Christ, is eternal. Yes. And and that's it. <clears throat> Listen, um, our hope is in Jesus at the end of the day. Our hope is not in politics. Our hope is not in money. Our hope is not in fame or wealth um, or things. Our hope is in Jesus. When we place our hope in all these uh, uh, physical things, what we end up doing is creating idols out of them. And when we create idols out of our politics or our money or our wealth or our things, then what happens is that we get defensive about our idols. And then we end up going from being defensive about our idols to being offensive uh, to Christ, offensive to God, and offensive to our brothers and sisters. So what I want to challenge is anybody that's listening to this, if you've hung up, if you hung out with us long enough, listen. We were t- today. This week has just been very kind of a, a very emotional week all across the board. And, and when me and Jay were talking, this was something that was very emotional for both of us because um, it's always so disheartening to see believers um, attack each other the way they have, and to tell each other always, 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 and to tell each other, "I can't be your friend because we disagree on this one thing." Well, you're not. A real Christian because, because we disagree. We disagree on this one thing. Um, so if you hung out, if you hung with us this far, what I would like to challenge you is this: if you're, if you're, if if you've done any of these things, if you've cut people out of your life because uh, because of a disagreement, then I would challenge you to to get on your knees before God and to ask Him to search your heart and to ask Him uh, to show you uh, where your hope should really lie. And where it should really be in. And if you've cut people that you've known for years only because you disagreed with them, um, call them up. Call them up. And I would ask you to really, really search your heart. Because I've seen brothers and sisters tear each other down. I've seen fellow believers tear each other down to the bone 
where it couldn't be repaired. And I would hate for anyone, any of our listeners, to lose any friends they've had for years. Or, or, even, s- or even family members. I've seen or, Yeah, family or family members. members over something ultimately as silly as what politician what won what election. Because when it's all said and done, it's all dust. It's all dust. So with that being said, my name is Joaquin. I'm still Jay. And uh, hey, listen, we love you. And we do want to end on a bit of a positive note. So we will <laughs> remind you. Go to thisisoutcry.com. You can catch the podcast, all kinds of stuff about us. Remember, you can also hear us on iTunes, Google, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. You can search us for thisisoutcry.com or the Overflow or Overflow podcast. It's easier if you go to thisisoutcry.com. So with that being said, we are done. This is the Overflow podcast <laughs> at thisisoutcry.com. Love you guys.